I'm not a big anime fan, but sometimes I like to branch out of my comfort zone. A couple months ago, I discovered a show named Agritsuko. It's a great adult show that everyone should look at. It's extremely binge-worthy too, as each episode has a cap of about 15 minutes. I finished watching Agritsuko the day I started. I was in love with it, still am. So I did some research into the show and found out that it's made by Sanrio, the creators of Hello Kitty. I started wondering if they made other animes that were more aimed at adults but were still fun and goofy in its own way. And thus, I found Show by Rock. And I fucking love it. Show by Rock was never always an anime. It started out as a rhythm game you could play on your phone. Fortunately, I was able to get my hands on it. I have no idea what any of this means, but I have found out how to get to the rhythm part of the game, so I am enjoying it at least. After its success as a game, Sanrio decided to produce the anime of the same name. And then, they gave the license to Funimation to make an English dub too. And I should mention, the dub is amazing. The story follows a shy character called Cyan who's trying to get into a music club, but is too much of a fraidy cat to do it. So she goes home and tries to convince herself of joining before some sort of deadline the club has to perform in. But then while she plays a rhythm game on her phone to distract her, she gets an item called Strawberry Heart. Then her phone glitches out, and Sion gets sucked inside her phone, falling from the sky and crash landing into a concert starring Trichronica, who I'll get to later. This is where the show goes off the rails a little bit, but bear with me. The performers on stage are also animals, but they're in 3D? Okay, I want to backtrack a little bit to explain something. Everyone in Sound World, which is where the anime is set, is a Mewmon. A Mewmon can be best described as a sort of animal-human hybrid. It should be noted, however, that they are usually in this animal form. I say this because it is said that Mewmons have the ability to change into more human-looking people. They still retain animal features like the ears, tail, teeth, etc., but they look more human than before. Think of it like an ultimate transformation when you're powerful enough. Back to the show, the concert suddenly gets attacked by a dark monster, and it's up to Trichronica to defeat it. They fail though, and get trapped. But Sion is in this weird virtual looking world too, and she retaliates with her guitar Strawberry Heart, defeating the monster and saving Trichronica. Shortly after, Sion finds herself back into Sound World and no longer in her Mewmon form. President Maple, a manager of his agency, Banded Rocking Records, goes up to Cyan and invites her to join his all-girl band in the agency, which she accepts because she always wanted to be in a band. He gets a little... excited, though. Hi. Why is that it talking? <sighs> Let me guess, this is just like when you order a hard-boiled egg! But the yolk is runny when you bite it, and you say, Wait, this isn't what I wanted, it's raw! Or like when you're looking to eat some candy eggs. So you peel the foil off excitedly! And you take a big bite, thinking you're about to taste some delicious sweet chocolate. But the inside's still white and yellow. Then you scream, you lied to me! By the way, do you like your eggs fried, sunny side up, or over easy? Yeah! And Choo Choo promptly That's puts him people. down. This Maybe is Plasmagica, our protagonist and the old girl band president was talking about. In the center, there's Choo Choo. She's a bunny and a music enthusiast whose goal is to be the number one rock queen no matter what the cost. Preferably, in her eventual solo career. Chuchu is the leader of the group and the lead vocalist too. There's Retori, a golden retriever dog who is a big techie and awkward most of the time. She really only joined Plasmagica to play music with friends and try to learn to socialize. Things haven't gone well for her though, and she gained very little actual relationship status with her bandmates. Retori plays bass. Finally, there's best girl Moa. She's a black sheep, which is supposed to be a pun to her not really being able to fit in with her band for a single reason. She's a fucking alien! She's a princess from the planet Pewdoo who wanted to take the assignment of investigating other worlds to see how they cope with power shortage, as planet Pewdoo is currently under crisis of a shortage. She also does this cute thing where she says Pewdoo at the end of all her sentences. Oh, 
モアは布団屋でバイト中です。She also plays the drums, which incidentally is my favorite instrument. Also, there's Cyan, which we already know about. She is shy but is extremely talented and she'll eventually be the band's vocalist and guitarist. When Cyan is done learning about her bandmates, she starts to wonder why she's in this strange world. And then, Strawberry Heart starts talking. Yeah, her guitar starts talking to her. He explains that she was sent here to stop the dark monsters from hurting anyone. And also to stop a man named Dagger from taking over Sound World. Dagger is the owner of the agency Unicorn Music Incorporated, and his goal is to be the undisputed ruler of Sound World, using Grateful King, a very respected musician, to make this song for the upcoming music festival, and make his move to get Cyan within his reach too. Once Cyan is dealt with, Dagger wins. I'm not going to say anything more about the plot because I genuinely want you to watch this amazing show and find out for yourself. Let's move on to the bands of the show. They are Plasmagica, who we've already talked about, Tricronica, who we've already seen, Shin Gun Crimsons, He's so powerful he manages to tame the angry lake of hellfire. That is the legend of Town Flame. And Siaba appears bearing his legendary dragon sword. Needs of grown men. Fatty oils are a necessity for men. Righteousness shines in lubricant form. For my name is Rom. Sing on your knees, all of you cattle. Be baptized in our crimson. Through your harmony, taste will be made. Don't go to Rome. Go home! Critic Krista. Thanks for waiting, ladies and gents. It's showtime. Ready for a cuteness overload. Gonna make your heart fit or pack. Show back in dogs in every way you can. And Zuri Zuri Aki Zuri Zuri Aga Yunan. Zuri Zuri Akuyi. Zuri Zuri. Ah, fuck it. Choo Choo, help me out. Tricronica is the number one band in Midi City, where the show is set. They didn't really do much over the course of the show, except Shu, the lead vocalist, has a backstory with Rom from Shingen Crimsons. Speaking of which, Shingen Crimsons is also signed under BRR, along with Plasmagica. They're major egotistical goofballs who all try to be better than each other, resulting in Rom, their drummer, kicking their ass and telling them the straight truth. They're side protagonists and do serve a sort of purpose in the story, but honestly, if you took them out and set focus solely on Plasmagica, I think nothing would be lost. Still, they're a great band and I'm happy they're in the show. Criticrista is a band full of middle schoolers who got into a famous school for talented people and are arch rivals of Plasmagica too. Later on in season 2 though, they also get signed under BRR. Finally, we have Zude Zude, which is a fantastic band. Their purpose in this story is clear, and their music is beyond amazing. They don't go much in depth into the band though, and I wish they really did. Here's my ranking of all the band music featured in the show. Falling through the sky, star of dreams, shining brightly in the night. It carries what we feel, let's sing as we all watch it fly. Every star I see, 
Speaking of depth, this show does a pretty good job at giving it to members in Plasmagica, especially Choo Choo in Season 1 and Moa in Season 2. Everyone in the show has a problem that they have to get over, Cyan being afraid, Retori having social anxiety, Choo Choo's understanding of what Plasmagica means to her, and Moa not being left out because she's from another world. Each of these problems has at least one standalone episode to help the person realize how to cope with it or solve it. There are some unsolved problems characters have too, like Rom's friendship with Shuzo in the past. They dedicate an entire episode in the second season, but in the end, it never gets solved. The band just accepts it and moves on because it was a long time ago. It teaches you the lesson that sometimes, the best way to solve a problem is with your closest friends. <laughs> So, what makes this show shine above all other shows? What makes it stand out? Answer, the music. Counting every star I see Observing quietly Trying hard to hide the sadness I feel Have you noticed it at all? When I think about what could have been my heart starts slowly breaking I get so restless My nights are sleepless I'm waiting here for you Hoping you'll make my wish come true Falling through the sky, star of dreams Shining brightly in the night I wanna be with you And we could watch just you and I No matter how far away we may be from each other now I know someday our two hearts will beat as one to be honest, the plot should have been changed to have Plasmagica attempt to reach number one in Midi City. Instead, we get an almost Code Lyoko-like plot, which isn't bad, just could be better. Most of the episodes that are great are because of the music and the characterization of the bands. You can even tell by the animation and framework done in the concert scenes. I mean, look at this. This is beautiful and at a very high FPS. I'd say 60. And then there's this, which, like most animes, is like a 15 to 30 FPS drawn animation, and it looks really choppy compared to the Mewmon scenes. Overall, watch this show for the music and character development, not for the plot, as it's not very serviceable. Which leads me to my next segment, things I actually don't like about this show. Number one, I don't like Retori's love interest in Cyan. Hear me out, I'm all for lesbian and gay relationships in media. I'm not saying it's because it's gay, I support those kinds of relationships. But I really don't like Retori's love for Cyan, because it's distracting, and it goes nowhere in either of the two seasons. I dread every time Cyan says meow, because then we get this reused animation of Retori and it gets annoying really quickly. Number two, it can at times be very cringeworthy, like this scene where Plasmagica learns that the best way to put on a good performance is with the best smiles. It just seems a little cheesy and almost feels like a kid's show at times but it doesn't detract from the plot or the serious moments in the anime, which I'll get to later. Number three, I don't like the show making fun of people who watch these kinds of shows for erotica purposes or to be kawaii and lolita. If you want to know what I mean, look up on YouTube, Show by Rock Short, Episode 1, and watch it all the way through. Something about watching one of my favorite characters' tale being inspected to make fun of people who think it's cute, of which I'm one of, makes me feel dirty and embarrassed 
embarrassed. Everything's going to be fine, Moa. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Other than the music, though, the show shines when it's serious. A complicated relationship or a depressing time for the band. As an example, Plasmagica finds out that Cyan has been keeping the whole I'm not from this world thing from them, and everyone just tries to deal with it somehow, while Retri runs and cries because she knows that Cyan will have to go back soon. And then, Cyan has to regain her trust towards Retri and the band, and they sing a beautiful song to show that despite their troubles, they'll always be together. But then, it gets worse, because Moa, sitting on a cliff, crying, confesses that she's also not from Soundworld, and that she's been keeping it a secret too. This episode is one of my favorite episodes in season 1, since it truly shows the band getting closer and dealing with each other's issues, figuring it out as a group. My other favorite episode being in season 2, where Plasmagica takes a trip to Moa's planet because she's been called in for not turning in her reports about Soundworld, and it shows the situation Moa's in, and makes you really relate to her issues, the black sheep that was far from home. And then through Plasmagica, she works through her conflict. The episode is amazing, and it's because of that characterization that I really like Moe as a character more than any other in the cast. Show by Rock isn't about furry bimbos playing heavy metal and being sexy to please a certain demographic. It's about love, friendship, and music. I absolutely recommend this show to anyone interested. There's an uncut English dub on Funimation featuring the music to also be dubbed, the first season being free along with a couple of the second season. If you want to watch more, on YouTube look up Kilara L. Agrest. Show by Rock. For a while now, she's been posting the simulcast English dub version of season 2 on her channel, meaning it's dubbed, but the music is in Japanese. This has been Show by Rock, and I fucking love it. Thank you very much.